Sometimes you wish to calculate area for features, but you have to be careful because there are different ways of calculating area and different settings that subtly control the value you get, and these values can vary quite substantially. So you have to delve in a little bit into how we calculate area because you may have in a data set an area that comes along with it, but you don't know what that area means. Here's a state data set in an Albers projection, and I get these funny numbers, and I might look and say, well, what the heck are those in meters, or what are those in? I can look at the properties and see that for this data set, the units are meters, but those can't be square meters because, as I noticed before, in this attribute table, the state of Wyoming is more than 27 square meters. Maybe it's been converted. So in order to get the area, I could go ahead and calculate the area. Now, there's a simple way to do this in QGIS that we'll get on to, but I have to go over the preliminaries. As we discussed in the readings in the GIS textbook, most maps are projected into a Cartesian coordinate system. It's this right angle system where you have northings and eastings that intersect at right angles all over the place. And we use our Pythagorean geometry you learned in high school or early college, where there are sines and cosines to calculate distances and directions. And then you can use these to calculate areas using the sort of square functions we're typical with. So we can have a traverse and we apply these relatively simple formulas using just one sine and one cosine to calculate the distance, direction, or areas. For large areas on the surface of the Earth, that won't work. We can get away with this Cartesian assumption in most of daily life because the errors associated with it, with making this untrue assumption, are tiny. They're millimeters over hundreds of or thousands of feet or meters. So over the distances we usually use, the we can get away with this assumption because it's really inconsequential. The errors are are not to be considered important in most operations, most things we're interested in. However, it's only an assumption. And if we want more accurate areas, especially over long distances or large areas, we have another set of calculations that give us a much more accurate answer. And if we go for large areas like states or even larger counties and certainly countries, then we use our Pythagorean, our Cartesian assumption, we'll be off by 20, 30% in areas, and that's just not acceptable. We really need to use alternative methods, ellipsoidal or spherical formulas that measure directions, distances, areas using these great circle distances or directions. And a great circle is a circle you can see here that has a center or passes through the center of the Earth. So the origin there, the center of the circle, is at the center of the Earth. And the directions and distances look kind of odd relative to our, our latitude longitude system. So if I'm flying from New York to New Delhi, I actually start out heading north, and then because these lines of equal longitude converge, midway through my trajectory, I'm heading more or less due east, and then I start to head south. So I'm not heading in the same direction for the shortest line, and these great circle distances are the shortest directions. And that's how we measure area. If we're going to enclose sides, we're going to measure along these edges, but we don't want to take some haphazard long way around, but rather along the defined edges. So the math is different. So the shortest distance from one point to another in a Cartesian sense, is not the shortest distance in this great circle and on the surface of the Earth as a person or traveling sense. Why don't we use these all the time? Well, two reasons. One, they're ridiculously complicated. Calculations of directions or area, as opposed to just a simple sine and cosine, had these maddeningly complex formulas. And so it's a lot of work. In addition, as I said, for small areas where we do most of our calculations, we don't use these methods. Our Cartesian approximations are close enough. The thing is, different GIS software, and even the same GIS software, can give you one measure or the other. The area calculated will vary by settings, depending upon which you're using, and they're more likely to be different the larger your area gets. 
If I'm measuring the area of a state for most states in this ellipsoidal version or the Cartesian version, I'm going to get very different areas. And so we have to be careful to know which area is getting reported and be careful to know how we're calculating our area. Now in QGIS, there's an important place where you tell it whether you want the planimetric, that is the Cartesian measurements, or this ellipsoidal kind of measurement. And that's in the project properties. In this general setting, in this ellipsoid, you can tell it what ellipsoid you want to use and what distance and area calculation. Now, if you say no ellipsoid, it does the Cartesian approximation. It just takes whatever coordinate system you have and does that simple Cartesian geometry and does the calculations. But if you set the ellipsoid, so I go down here and set it to the GRS 80, which is the one that underpins the current N8083, or down here to the WGS84, the GPS-related one, ITRF-related one. If I set that, then it's going to do an ellips ellipsoidal calculation. And it doesn't matter what my projection is, what my Cartesian planimetric map is, it'll, before it does the calculation, project back to the latitude longitude and use those ellipsoidal formulas that are much more complicated. Now, if you're just doing that for a few small areas, it's transparently fast. Modern computers are really fast. If you're doing it for all the partials in a really large counter in a state, they would probably take too long. So we stick with planimetric measurements in some instances and um, ellipsoidal measurements in other instances. But for large areas, you probably want to use the ellipsoidal rather than the planimetric. So you want to go to the top here and pick planimetric for small areas um, and the ellipsoidal for large areas. I'm going to stick with planimetric because that will show you the distortion. So we'll apply that and say OK in calculating different ways. So if I go to the Albers here and I right click and open the attribute table, I can see there's an area calculated, don't know what the heck it is, but I can then calculate my own area. So I turn editing on, go to this abacus to open a field calculator. I'll create a new field and I'll call this um, area alb oops, in with a planimetric option. And I'll make sure that I do it as a decimal number. I want to give it another, enough space so that I can see the size. And down here in geometry, I can ask it to calculate the area. And I'll divide that by 1 million because the units are meters. It would give me an area in square meters, but that'd be this huge number. I want the area in square kilometers. And since there's a thousand meters in one kilometer. I square that, I get a million, and so I divide it by a million to give me output in square kilometers. And I say, okay, and it does the calculation. And there's the area in Albers for Wyoming, right? So I can sort by state name and look at the area here in this Albers projection. I'll go ahead and save those. Uh, and there's my area Albers. Now I can go to the Mercator here and I'll open the Mercator attribute table, I'll do the same thing. I'll calculate its area. I'll have to make a new field. I'm going to call this area mech plan. I'm going to make sure again that it's a decimal number, that it's quite large to hold the space. Do the same geometry area divided by a million and do my calculation, and I can see then I get different values. So for Alabama here, I get this um, 133944 in one coordinate system and 189300 in another coordinate system. So these are the planimetric options. When I project in an Albers, I get a different amount of distortion than when I project in the Mercators. Well, which is closer? From my discussion, I would guess that the Albers is probably closer because the Albers is set, as you know from the readings, to fit the region of the U.S. fairly well, this particular Albers. So it's an Albers that has a projection 
with lines of intersection here along the middle of the state, I can go see which is closer by switching back to the properties. And in this general, rather than using a planimetric, use the full-blown geographic method. So I can go here to this WGS84 or the GRS80, which is probably more closely related to what we have here. I'll apply that and say OK. Now when I redo the calculation, it will be in a, um, a geodetic or a uh, more ellipsoidal approximation, which is the full-blown, really complicated math. And so I can go ahead then and calculate the area, and I'll call this area alb, but this is geoid or planimetric. I'm going to go ahead and give it a decimal, make it big so that it'll hold the data, do the area again, the geometry, and divide by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and say OK. And I see I get a value that's pretty close. It's slightly different from the Albers, but it's pretty close. It's 133944 versus 133945. So there's you know square kilometer distance difference, something like that in these two methods. So a couple of take-home points. One, how you calculate area matters. If you use a planimetric method, you can get an approximation that's pretty good for small areas, but can get bad for large areas. Two, the projection matters. Here, this Albers projection, which is relatively well chosen to represent area for the lower 48 of the US, gives a reasonably close answer. Finally, why would you not always use the most complicated math all the time? For large areas with a lot of really small features, you're going to really bog down the computations. Now, as computers get faster, that becomes less of an issue. So we use the approximation to it keep our speed up while giving us a reasonably accurate answer. And for small areas like parcels, like land ownership, those sorts of things, we get a reasonable approximation using the Cartesian system. So again, you know how to calculate areas, hopefully you know a little bit of the nuance. You have to make sure you know how you're calculating areas by looking at this project properties, the general tab, and see what method they're using.